we are in this room, in this time together, I would encourage you as you remember that you would also recognize who it is that you have with you. That you would look around and see the faces of friends and family who have come to share in this moment, but who also share in life with you right now and moving forward. Please join me as we enter into a time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you who have blessed us all with the gift of life and who has given Garnet her many years and her many gifts, we praise you. We thank you for her life, for every moment of love, for every good deed done, for every sorrow and joy shared. We thank you for her life, and we thank you for the eternal rest to which you have now called her. Be with this family today as they celebrate her life and as they consider not just her passing, but also the glorious resurrection that you have promised to all who believe in your Son. It is in this name, the name of Jesus, that we pray all of these things. Amen. Amen. Garnet Ingrid Cottrell was born to James Ingram Quarter and Pearl Tennis Nicholson Quarter on April 7, 1936 in Bristol, West Virginia. On June 26, 1955, she married John Bray Cottrell, and to this marriage, three children were born, James Russell, Sharon Lynn, and John Michael. Grandchildren are Karen, Justin James, and Derek Allen. Great-grandchildren are Blakely Martin and Gabriel Matthew. Siblings are Marlon Simon, Gerald, Roger, and Randall Porter. And she is preceded in death by her mother and father, husband, and two sisters, Maxine Kraft and Janet Packard. And it bears in mind that she is survived by all these who are gathered here today. You who are people who bear the memory, bear the mark of her life, people who are gathered for the purpose of remembering, but also remembering that you have life to live with that memory and to create more memories of your own. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but would have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that in order that those who believe in him would be saved. Life has a way of coming to us and giving us gifts, and eventually life has a way of leaving us all. But as it leaves us, it does not leave us without hope. As it leaves us, it does not leave us broken. It leaves us in a place of being reconnected fully and finally with our Savior. In Romans chapter 8, we read these words. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither life nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is a promise that we are all made repeatedly throughout the scriptures. And it is something that we can hold on to as we continue in life and as we remember those who have passed. Now, I have been informed that many in the family uh, may be a little bit hesitant to get up and to speak. Maybe a few folks are kind of shy, I think is the word that I was told. Uh, but this is an opportunity. If anybody would like to share a few words, if anybody has a memory to share with everyone, you are invited to do so now. There's no pressure. I know you're going to have more family time later on, but if there is somebody who feels something weighing on their hearts they'd like to share, I'd like to give you an opportunity now to do that. Okay. Like I said, there's no pressure. You're going to have plenty of time later to share with friends and family in other ways that are less formal. I'd like to read a paraphrase of Proverbs 31. Who is able to find an excellent woman, an excellent wife, or an excellent mother? If you find one, you must know that she is far more precious than jewels. She is trusted by everyone who knows her. People count on her, and she meets their needs. 
Every day of her life, she is both focused on good and does good. She doesn't shy away from doing work, whether it's hard or not. She works with her hands, she works with her heart, and all the work she does prospers. There is no distance that she won't cover to do what needs to be done. For such a woman, there is no time that is too early or too late. There is no task that goes undone, and there is no one who goes uncared for. Every resource at her disposal is considered carefully and put to use earnestly. She is strong because she seeks strength in the Lord. She knows the value of what she has and what she does. She persists always in doing good and in working hard. When she sees a need, it is her desire to meet that need. No matter what happens, she does not worry or fear because in her diligence, she is prepared for all circumstances. And though she is not vain or worldly, she cares for herself and presents herself well. Those she cares for are well respected in the community and beyond. The work that she does provides for her family. There is no fear of the future in her heart because she knows who holds on to the future. Her knowledge of God strengthens her, and in this she finds dignity. When she speaks, you can be assured that what she says will be wise, true, loving, and kind. And for such a woman, there is no such thing as downtime. Rest comes when work is done. Her children stand in honor and know that she is blessed. Her children stand in her honor and know that they are blessed because of her. Her husband, knowing her value, pours praise upon her. It is true that many women do well, but this woman is cherished above them all. Why? Because this woman puts, on, puts aside worldly concerns. This woman doesn't devote herself to flattery. No, this woman fears the Lord. She is to be honored. She has cared and she has loved and she has worked and she has succeeded. For such a woman as this, there is no such thing as downtime. Rest comes when the work is done. And now her work is done. And now she can rest. Please join me in prayer. Most merciful God, whose wisdom and love are beyond our understanding, Surround this family with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but instead that they would have confidence in your goodness and strength and peace and love to meet their needs in the days to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It truly is the greatness of our God that makes it so that we can stand up and say how great he is and that it is well with our souls. Even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of the passing of loved ones, we can recognize the greatness of our God and the fact that he has given us peace and joy in the midst of our sorrow. One of the great promises of our God is not that he would take us out of joy, out of pain or out of suffering, but that he would be with us in the midst of those things. And I trust that you can feel the presence of the Lord even as you go through your time of mourning. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 through 30, give us a real solid image of what it is that Jesus has in mind for us in all moments of our life. He says these words, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We do have the guarantee and the eternal rest that we can experience with our Savior when we pass. But even as we still live, our Savior stands to provide rest for us in the midst of our difficult daily lives. I encourage you not to wait for your passing in order to rest in the arms of the, your Savior, but to recognize that you can rest in his loving arms right now, even today, that you can be comforted by him that he will take up your burdens right now and replace it with his, which is light and which is easy. Matthew 6, 9 through 13, records this instruction that the Lord gives us about how we should pray. It likely sounds very familiar to most of us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.